Hello everybody, welcome to this video. We are going to talk about the Lab Pano Panox V2, which is their last 360 camera. This is their second two lenses 360 camera because they always made the four sensors 360 cameras and this could be a really interesting step because it points to be an Insta360 competitor. We have two 200 degrees lenses and the sensors are half inch, which is really good because this improves the content in low light conditions. In the front we have a wide 3 inches touch display when uh, we have everything that we need to take the pictures to control the camera in our hands and we can literally uh, reach every single point with a single finger and it's really easy to use it and to create the own content. On the left side we have the SD card slot, we have the USB type C port and the speaker while on the right side we have the power button and the vent for the fan. While on the bottom we have the classic 1 4th inch screw hole. This camera has also two microphones, one on the front and the other one on the rear side. The system is based on Android 10. In fact, scrolling down we have the classic window where we can enable or disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the GPS. We have the luminosity and I'm going to keep it low just to, to make you see better in this video. We can directly eject the TF card if we want to put it in an adapter and use it directly on the laptop or we have the classic settings. And here we have all the customization of the camera. We have we can change the Wi-Fi uh, which is connected to. We can enable the hotspot to make the phone connect to the camera. And then we have all the other settings like the Nadir logo, screen settings, the sounds and the other settings for the videos, keyboard storage and the update. Also, the classic navigation has been improved. In fact, if we go in certain menus, we can just swipe to go back or we can just swipe from the bottom to the top to turn back to the live view. On the main screen, we have everything we need to know about the, the status, the actual status of the camera. We have the memory, the rest and memory, like for example, how many pictures we can take or how many hours we can record in, uh, in the actual video mode or the actual photo mode selected. We have the status of the battery. While on the button we have all the other controls like the shutting button, the manual controls of the shutter speed, ISO and white balance. We have the other settings where we can set the various parameters of the content that we are going to create like the stabilization or the quality, the resolution and the various timers. We have the gallery and here we have the mode, the selector of the modes because we have several modes for both photos and videos and we have also live streaming. For example, let's select classic photos and here we can see that it changed uh, in how many pictures we can still take and here we have other parameters like the hide photographers mode and uh, also the other timers, the resolution which is 12k for the pictures and it's really really good. We have the HDR and at this moment while I'm recording we have only JPEG format but in the January it's going to be released the DNG possibility so we can shoot in 12k in DNG files and then edit them with a third party program. The gallery navigation is really really easy because we have all the content in a single folder let's say because we, it's just divided by the date with it we can see changing in, uh, in the left top corner and if we want to take a look at the, at the content we just can tap on it and then navigate if we want to take a look at the pictures or if we want to take a look at a video we can just uh, uh, open it and play and it directly plays inside the camera of course we have to turn on the volume if we want to listen and also we can scroll through the video to take a look at the various moments without any problem. Also if we want to filter some content like only photos or only videos or only Google Street View shooting we can tap here and here we have the selector of the varial content because we can have only photos or only for example uh, Google Street View videos or only 360 videos etc. So we can just filter this content uh, here directly in the gallery. And last but not least the stitching because in this camera you have to do the stitching in camera so you just tap here in the gallery and tap on stitch and then select the content that you want to stitch. Let's just for example select these two pictures and here on the bottom there is the command for the stitching. Of course it says that will uh, take a bit of memory to do it and then it will automatically stitch all the content that you selected. If they are already stitched it will be very fast of course it ne if it needs to stitch the content it will take a while and after this you have the equirectangular content on your camera and after the stitching you can just connect 
connect the camera to your computer through a USB Type-C cable or just eject your TF card and use an adapter to put it into your, into your computer and then watch 360 acquired Tangular content or otherwise you can already connect your camera to the app. The app is very easy to use and very intuitive. You can just connect to the same Wi-Fi of the camera or connect the phone to the camera's hotspot and then just connect the camera through the app. In a few seconds, you're going to see appear the mobile control on the app. And here in a few seconds, you can just enter the camera and have its view, its direct live uh, preview. Of course, the preview will be compressed. So the quality that you can see on the screen, it will not be the same of the content for the obvious reasons. Here on the side, you have the various uh, parameters like the battery and the, um, the TF card remaining memory. Here on the top, you have the various resolutions and the other settings like HDR and uh, the quality of the, um, of the various contents and the various details while at the bottom you have of course the, um, the shutter button, the manual control so you can check the shutter speed or the ISO etc and you can set everything manually or of course you can change the shooting mode and uh, you can do it very very easily. To take a look at the whole gallery we have to go back in the main menu and on the bottom we choose album and on the top camera. Here we have every single content that there is in this moment on the camera and we can choose what to do with them. Let's, for example, take a look at a simple picture like this one. This was a real estate shooting in a bathroom and uh, you can take a look at everything. You can zoom in it and the quality is really, really good. I can tell this. We have the menu here to export the panorama or the, the flat picture or at the bottom we can choose download to download the content on the app. After the download, you will see a small check with the arrow on the bottom left of each icon as for example here you can see it because I already downloaded this content and even if you disconnect the camera and even if you disconnect the camera you can just go in up in the album and here you will find your content for example this one is here. Once you downloaded the video, you have a small editor here because you can see there is a trimmer at the bottom and you can take a look at the video you have recorded and then move the camera by framing it because you can set some hot points here and then you can direct them because you, if you, for example, need to frame in, in a certain moment, you have to frame yourself. In another moment, you can frame something else on the, on the camera because, of course, you are recording in 360 and then you can put these hotspots and make the view make the frame move in another direction whenever you need it. I'm going to show you, for example, a small um, test that I made in a tiny planet video. And you can see here that I set the tiny planet view because it was really, really incredible. And you can do all these movements by just setting some hotspots in the right positions and for the right view. And this was about the uh, mobile control from the app. Meanwhile, to transfer the photos and the videos, your content to your computer, you can just connect the USB Type-C uh, to the camera and uh, the other side of the USB cable to your computer. And you can just drag and drop it from the gallery, from the um, directory, directly on your directory or on your desktop whenever you need it. I'm really glad that this camera is so good since the beginning and it's a really good competitor to the other Action 360 cameras and it's really really easy to use which could be a really nice choice for all the people not only for professionals for virtual tours because of its resolution but it's also for people who just want to have fun with their camera and record their moments their memories and this camera could be a really really nice choice.